Zar 1000 with my TNA Impact for April 21st, 2011. Gonna start off the show. AJ Styles, it was a set up with the cage and a bunch of weapons. AJ Styles flies down from the rafters and basically calls out Billy Ray, says, Be a man and come out and face me. And I'm running a cage match right there. And I'm, uh, so Bully Ray comes out and then talk back and forth. And Bully Ray basically says, I put you in the hospital for a month. You don't want me to come down there because I will end your career. And then Daniels comes out and basically throws him in the cage to AJ, beats him up for a while. And it looks like AJ is going to fly from the top, but he doesn't. So, that was pretty good. I mean, it was a good little brawl, and then Bully Ray gets out, runs away. And then we have, uh, Murphy and whoever, Rob Terry, cut a promo and basically called out the World Tag Champs. And so then we end up having an impromptu tag match, I believe it's for the titles. I believe it was for the belts, but of course Beer Money retained. I believe. Um, yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, it was for the tag team titles, so Immortal can get some of their power back. Beer Money came out and basically requested them, challenged them, and they accepted the challenge. Of course, Beer Money won. Beer Money Champions with Rob Terry and the Steel Cage, which is kind of cool because you had a tag title match in Steel Cage basically the next night after the lockdown because they tape on Mondays. So that was kind of cool. And then they won. We have footage from earlier tonight. The Karen and Jeff walking on riding the horsey. The show comes back, Hogan music hits, and Hogan Cup walks out. The crowd boos him and he walks in calling out Rob Van Dam. RV comes out. He gets married with Hogan. He calls, basically calls RV a mid card. You've never been any, but you're just a big fish in a small pond. And Steen comes out and basically says that he has, the network has given him the right. If he wins, if he would have won the, won the title, which he did, he can pick his opponents. Which is kind of weird. So he basically picks RV as his opponent for, I think it's Sacrifice to pay per view for that next. The Kurt Angle showing backstage is Eric Young. And they're talking about how he's feeding the horses and a bunch of crap. Like they're feeding them oats or beans or whatever. So they're pooping everywhere. And so Kurt gets an idea. And then they return and Tara is brushing her hair. And then Madison Rain yells at her, blah, blah, blah. They end up having a tag title, knockout tag title match, which I think is going to end up being either you find out this week or next week. That Victoria versus Madison Rain, a pay per view or something similar to that, coming up soon. And basically, if Tara wins, this is why I don't know, I've read no spoilers, so this is why just my opinion on this is going to happen. That Tara's going to, if she beats Madison, she's free to get, continue her career as a knockout. And if Tara or Madison wins, she has to leave TNA forever. So that's why I think that's my personal opinion. And yeah, you know, we have, and they, of course, um, uh, Rosita and Tara keep the belt. Or Rosita, Tara, Rosita, and Sarita, two hot tamales, come back to the royal chair in the ring, and basically Karen being this blah blah blah, crappy screams, poop, basically a bucket of mud poured on her. Then Kurt comes out and gives um, uh, Jeff Jarrett the angle slam into that, sh that little cushion chair, so yeah. And then he basically tells her I would never hit a woman, but he has his, he said you can call her the new Miss Angle or his mistress that he's going to have come beat her, basically beat her ass. So I'm guessing we're setting up for a new another match. We have Hog or Abyss with Hogan, or Hogan with Abyss versus RVD. And basically, Hogan throws the steel pipe in, and he and the Abyss wins pretty much. And they beat the crap out of him. I believe the only one came out. Oh yeah, there's like, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, what's his name? It's uh, Crimson. Yeah, Red's little brother supposedly. And Abyss wins. 
Uh, after Crimson comes in and spears him, but backstage, team where he cuts a great, pro it was phenomenal, phenomenal. This promo was freaking awesome. I mean, he said some great stuff about Matt Hardy. Ooh, I'm scared about Matt Hardy. You want me to get in the ring and do something I love doing, that's wrestling. We also have Matt Morgan, I believe, next come out and cut a promo. Oh, Matt Hardy cuts a promo about his brother, Jeff, holding Jeff's world title house. Sting threw it in the trash and called it garbage. And actually, that was Hogan who took out and said, this is a piece of crap. And he threw it out. It was actually Hogan. But whatever, TNA, don't keep your facts straight. Because all Sting came out and said after that whole debacle at Victory Road, all he said is, here's your world. This is all left of Jeff Hardy. And Hogan's the one said, I don't want this piece of crap. And he threw it out of the ring. So, I mean, come on. Really? You think we're stupid? Then Morgan hits the ring, says he's the DNA of TNA. He wants his title shot. Then Steiner music hits, which is basically I kind of figured he was going to come out. And this is basically going to be Steiner and Morgan at a pay-per-view. Steiner went heel in this promo because he kicked him in the nuts, basically. He put him in the Steiner recliner. And I think this is basically just going to have Steiner versus Morgan at, a pay at the pay-per-view. And then Morgan's going to win. Because I don't really see Steiner getting any more world title shots in his future. I think they're just going to use this as a build for a number one contenders match. And pretty much that's what I think. Then backstage, Morgan, he would kill himself. That's what Steiner told him, blah, blah, blah. Um, Miss Testmacher cuts a quick backstage promo saying that, bitches, I'm back. She's been out for four months and she's been training in the ring. Sting is shown backstage. He commercial comes back, goes to the sky, basically gets in. I was her face, his face, where? And then Angelina beats her up with stage. Gonna be taken care of soon. And I didn't know it was her title match, though, guys. The match happened. I wasn't really paying attention to the beginning that much, I guess. So we have Sting versus Matt Hardy, and then Immortal comes out, or Matt Hardy comes out, and then it looks like Immortal's gonna jump in, and then Fortune beats the crap out of Immortal. But then the TV champ, whatever the guy's name is, basically hits him with a pipe. It goes on and on. It was an okay match. It wasn't great. So basically, I mean, Sting hits him with a scorpion death drop and wins. And so yeah, Sting wins. They do show some promos backstage. Oh yeah, wait, Anderson comes out and gives them both the mic check. And I think Anderson wants to set himself up for a world title match. So yeah, I agree. That's pretty cool. So I think Anderson wants to have Sting pick him. I hope we don't have a repeat of the triple threat match again, but whatever. Alright, this is Bizarre 1000. That was my impact reviews. Okay, so have a good one.